We play the water bottles. We play the broomsticks. We play the free leave water bottles. This is Jill Chalkley, Year 6 teacher and music coordinator at Withicom Rayleigh Primary School in Devon. Amongst other things, she started this stomp band, which she's taken to the final of the National Festival of Music for Youth in Birmingham for the last three years. So quiet. This year's challenge is the school production of the musical Africa Rocks, which was written by a parent of an ex-pupil at the school. It is set in Kenya and looks at some of the issues facing modern-day Africa, a topic close to Jill's heart. My family lived in Africa when I was quite young, so I missed out on the formal music education, although I did lots of singing and dancing with people who lived round about us. I didn't learn any notation or any of the correct words or anything. However, I think probably that has helped me working with children because I understand where they're coming from, I understand their difficulties, and it makes it a little bit easier for them. That's my theory. It's one week before the production, and Jill's taking her Year 5 music class for a practice in a school amphitheatre. Through the Wider Opportunities Scheme, Jill was able to acquire some African djembe drums for the school. These will feature in the musical, so it's important the pupils are all in time. Well done. Last one. Who can remember it? The hardest one of the three we've learned. Sam. Excellent. Let's have a go, everybody. One, two, three, four. Jill also uses this practice to look for links to other topics. Why do the vibrations need to come out, Sam? Because um, when you hit the drum, all of the vibrations come out and all of the air comes out of the bottom, which creates the sound. Excellent. So vibrations travel through? Yeah. Good boy. Excellent. little cross-curricular link there because we're doing music, but that's a science link because the vibrations travel through the air. I think music is absolutely vital in primary schools with all these targets and high-stakes testing puts enormous pressure on children. And I feel that the music gives them a release from all those pressures. All they're asked is to enjoy themselves and do their very best. So for me, music is a wonderful antidote to the present system we have in primary education. Some of these pupils will be drumming in the final production. The rest will be singing, acting and dancing. With so many aspects to this production, Jill can't do it all herself and has enlisted the help of teaching assistant Karen Volpini. I came to Withercombe School about four years ago and they asked me to help with the dancing uh, since they found out I used to be a dancer. <laughs> and I've actually incorporated my dancing towards it, doing the actions as well for the music and gone on from there. Dum, boom, boom, dum, boom, boom. A, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Down in Devon, you know, you don't expect them to do much of cultural dancing and I think it's a brilliant idea that the parent has written a script like this and give the children an idea and experience and realise what is happening in Africa and to bring it home to them. And I think showing it through dance, singing and, you know, drama, I think that's the best way to get it over to kids. <laughs> Listen, listen first, boys. It's here. La, ready? La, la. Now back in school, Jill's taken some small sections of the choir aside for some fine tuning. One, two, three, four. What we have found in life is that you can't always follow the golden rules. That's why we make them so that we can break them. Just right. That's why we make them. Do that bit. That's why we make them excellent. One of the biggest changes Jill has made is increasing the number of boys in the choir. Um, you are the one. And stop there a minute. 
So I've made a specific effort with the boys, and lots of extra girls have joined on the way. I'll see somebody and say, you've got a great voice, come on, you should be in choir. And they go, mm, 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 mm. and I still nag them until they get fed up with being nagged, and then they come. And it doesn't take very long for them to then be completely wrapped up in it and see that it is enormous fun. So now we've got a very large choir of 92 children. Say boom, chicka boom. Say boom, chicka boom. Say boom, chicka boom. Say boom, chicka boom. Aha. Aha. Hee hee. Hee hee. One more time. One more time. In a baby's voice. In a baby's voice. In year three, I was a bit like, whoa, why am I joining choir? I didn't really like, and then I felt a bit stupid then because I didn't really like it and now I've gone to year five I think well it's I'm glad I joined now because there's so much activity going on there's she gets you involved in lots of dancing and that and then things like that, that is what I love. at the beginning I wasn't very confident at all I could even sing to myself and now I've got this I can sing in front of loads of people and that so it got me a lot more confident in what I'm doing I joined choir because I had watched a few of the choir concerts before and they looked really good fun and I decided to try it and see if it was good and I really like it. Sometimes if you try for a sports team you don't get it and you're disappointed but anybody can join choir and with music you can express yourself and you don't and it boosts your self-esteem. Jill feels very strongly that participation in her performances should be available to everyone. I think music is a wonderful way of allowing every child to take part, and I don't care if they can't sing a note, they can still be part of the choir. And I, I find that a lot of children do, actually, eventually tune in, and you might end up with two or three growlers still at the end. It's quite rare, but so what? We are there doing something together, sharing something and creating something, and we're just enjoying ourselves. So that's my aim. I would never, ever turn any child away. She gives really good opportunities for people, so you don't just get left out and everything. She makes sure you do, like, a certain part for everything. It's been a long day. And for some, this will be their last time to practice before the dress rehearsal next week. So how is everyone feeling about the show? I'm a little bit nervous because I have to sing a duet, um, so that's a little bit nerve-wracking. And I'm a bit nervous about um, the drumming because if you get one hand wrong or something, it can make a mistake in it and sound all bad. I can't wait. It's going to be so fun. Um, well... I can't wait either because I'm not exactly really nervous, I'm excited. We've worked hard, like really hard to get to it and now when it's gone we'll all be like sad because we don't have anything to do after on a Friday. When you're performing to your parents and family it gives you like such a buzz and you feel really good about yourself because it, so it makes your confidence soar. Give yourselves a clap. This time next week we will have done one night which is a terrifying thought. I think really and truly we are nearly ready. There's always extra things you can do. Um, I have moments when I think, oh my goodness, we are never going to get there. But then at the end of the day, I always keep right at the front of my mind that this is children sharing their work, sharing their joy of music with their parents. And I think if you remember that, that takes the pressure off. I'll keep telling myself that all next week. <laughs> It's the night of the show. With such a demand for tickets, the production is taking place at the nearby secondary school. As the audience take their seats, the cast go through their final preparations. We had a bit of a problem with balancing your voices with the CD. Now, we've brought the CD down a bit, but we can't put it down too low, otherwise we won't be able to keep up with it. So everybody in here has got to raise their voice tonight.
would say to anyone, do have a go. Don't be frightened. Don't be frightened of singing. If start off at first with your own class, do something that you know really well. Take a simple song and do it with them. Find a song that you want to teach. Get a child to teach it. Children are far less self-conscious than we are, and they're often very keen to stand up and sing anyway, so they'll take the singing bit away from you. Make it fun. Make them laugh. Make them sing. And you've won your battle. One day you will wake up. I feel hot now because we've been jumping around that was and so cool, I feel it? tired, but it's all worth it. Yeah. It was really good doing um, that performance. Now I'm a lot more confident than I've ever done it before. Well, the children certainly enjoyed themselves. What did the audience think? I've got um, one kid who's in the performance and I've got another child at the school. Yeah, it was wonderful. The themes that were coming out were what everyone really believes. And I think that for the kids to be able to express that in this way is perfect. We've never done it in a big hall like this and with people teared up. So they've done fantastically well, especially some of the little ones who, when they first started, hardly opened their mouths and yet they still sang in a little group and actually did manage to pull it off, remembered to get over to their place on time, didn't have to be told by me. So I was really pleased with them. Compared to this afternoon at the dress rehearsal, we were going, come on, you know, get more energy, keep the singing going. But I think that audience, the response from the audience, seeing them, that really just boosted them even more and gave the adrenaline go. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> I enjoyed it too. <laughs>